Well, what is a perennialist? First of all, the perennialists are people who hold that there is a truth, and that truth is found in the different religions, mainly Christianity, Hinduism. They, they pretty much ignore Judaism because the Jews don't want any of this. And Islam. They pretty much are promoting that. Sometimes they dabble in Native American religion. I don't even know if you call that religion. Hinduism also, it's not religion. It's like a plethora of different ideas that the British ended up naming Hinduism. Uh, the, just basically the ideas of the Hindu land. So the Pranalists do believe that there is a truth, okay? And that it's in these religions, same universal truth. And when it comes to the actual contradictions within the religions, these religions, they, they get fuzzy and they basically say that there's a mystical reality above it all. So basically to ignore your intellect when it comes to recognizing the linguistic or, or, or the do doctrinal differences and to say that, you know, to, in order to bring these ideas down to the level of their culture or their people or the intellects of that time, they needed to use this language. So what one thing that you're faced with is the necessity really of suspending your intellect in favor of a mystical experience that somebody must have had that is telling us that to just ignore all these clear differences. Like Jesus, is it is the Trinity true or is the Islamic version true? Okay. Um, reincarnation. Is that true or is the day of judgment true? Like when I die, what's going to happen? Am I going to be judged as myself or is my soul and mind going to be put into another body? And if so, what source is informing us of that? Uh, and number two, like, do I remember? Like, um, if I have, it's the same soul in the same body. So is your memory wiped away? Otherwise you'd remember who you were and everyone would be claiming, Hey, I was Elvis. Hey, I was Napoleon. Hey, I was Genghis Khan. And if that's not the case, if the case is that your memory is wiped away and you start over fresh, then who would have ever known that you're reincarnated, right? If your memory is wiped fresh, then who's telling you that you're reincarnated? So they dabble with these things and their approach to it is essentially an an anti-rationalist approach, a, a, a mystical approach that is basically, it's not super rational, it's anti-rational. It's basically telling you, uh, just, uh, don't go the route of the common man's intellect, okay, and, uh, uh, and, the, and the literalist jurist intellect. Leave that and recognize that there's a mystical reality above these words and above these doctrines, okay? That is essentially the premise of, of, of perennialism. And the funny thing about it, the reason is that, I th are, are these guys extinct? Like, Omar, have you ever heard of perennialism outside of this? I mean, right now I'm just taking a class in Rutgers. Like, yeah. Just because, you know, you have to fulfill the requirements. Yeah. So like a religion class and they're going over it. But cool. it's weird, like a lot of people, like, because you know how there's discussion posts? A lot of the people, I think they're leaning towards that, like the perennialist. Most people, they lean towards a type of perennialism that's a layman's perennialism which is not necessarily just a perennialism. It's more like between perennialism and relativism. Yes. So relativism is like, there's not one set of truths, but everyone's got a little bit of truth. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's one view. And there's, there's a think tank. Zaytuna College is into, is, 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 gets a lot of funding from them. I'm not trying to bash Zaytuna College. I'm just saying they get a lot of funding from them. The founder of that think tank holds the philosophy that no religion got it, got it right. But e every religion got it a little bit right. So hold on a second. Wouldn't you need to know what's right in order to judge these religions, right? Like these things, their, their logic is always circular. There, there's a fund, a foundation. It's some rich guy who was, seems like a nice guy, right? He's some rich guy and he was into finding out what the truth is. But like many businessmen, they make bold claims that are beyond their scope, right? Like you shouldn't be making these claims, but he made the claim because when you're really rich, you're surrounded by people who just say, yeah, that's a great idea, right? Otherwise their paycheck is going to be in doubt. So he, he ends up basically saying that all religions have some truth in it, but none of them got it fully right. So you would need to know what's right. So you got it right. <laughs> exactly. So you're, you're claiming that you got it right. You would need to know what is right in order to make that judgment. Just like, um, who is it that says that, who was it that says that? Um, oh, like the followers of Ibn Arabi, and I don't need to get in trouble with them, but, you know, I love them and everything, but they say that 
they divide up the uqala, the 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 uqul, the intellects into the the common man, the mid range intellect, which is the majority of like scholars and fuqaha and imams, and then the high level intellect, which is the mystics and stuff. Okay, if that's the case, then you are making a judgment. Can you show us what the scale is, right? What's the scale? Because if they're if you're making a judgment, these guys got it. These guys are okay, and these guys don't got it. What is the scale? So we can study the scale. Just like saying IQs. Well, you can give me the exam. I can study for it. I can improve. Same Ibn Taymiyyah on the opposite side says logic doesn't benefit people who are intelligent. They don't need it. And if they're uh, dull, they don't benefit from it. It just confuses them. Hold on a second. So you're telling me that there's really smart people and there are dull people. Based on what scale did you make that judgment? Yeah, right? Sure. Based upon what scoreboard? Based upon what measuring stick? Show us the measuring stick. Is that not a rational statement that you just made? Then it needs a measuring stick. So I think like on, on both sides, all right, Ibn Taymiyyah used to put away uh, Mantiq. He, he downgraded Mantiq. The Ibn Arabi, uh, the Akbarians, as I understand it also, they have some downgrades on Mantiq. And then end up, you get end up with perennialism also is close to the Akbarian view, but of course not, not even close to that because Akbarians are all Muslims, right? The perennialist view is not an Islamic view. Someone who has that is a murtad, apostate, a zindiq, or whatever you want to call it. Not, a, not an apostate because he's still saying he's a Muslim, but he's a zindiq. Mm -hmm. They end up saying that all the, the faiths, it is really not necessary to make a decision on which faith, but you need to be orthodox within each one. You need to be the orthodox of each religion in any of the religions, and you'll arrive at a great spiritual reality. So, uh, Tom Ficini puts this together on Yaqeen. Read it for yourselves. And here's the thing. I, I love it and everything, but you know what I love even more? Perennialists are extinct. If you're just out there in the realm of Dawah, just walking around, you don't see them, right? They're, they have no madhar. They're, they're, who's their, who are their leaders? Who are their books? It's all the old generation. There was a generation... In the 60s, 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s, into the 80s, maybe into the 90s, that loved this mystical stuff that brought all the religions together. It seems like it had like two people with divorced parents of different religions just looking for something that brings it all together. And the study of Quran came out 2015. It got lambasted. The sales tanked. Okay. Everything was, it really was like a terrible launch for them. Because they tried to sneak it in. You know, if they had said, oh, by the way, this is the perennialist view, I'd be like, okay, well, they said it, right? They, they made a clear distinction for the Sunni reader, but nobody said anything, nor the, the, the Sunni imams who promoted it. And then um, they didn't say anything. They didn't say, this is a great book. Just keep in mind, there's a perennialist idea in here. That could be acceptable, okay? It probably, you know, wouldn't be to many people because you're still uh, promoting something that is... Uh, antithetical to the to our doctrine, our, our, our aqidah that Allah brought down in the Quran, but nonetheless, at least you could say they pointed it out. Same with Zamakhshari. The man Zamakhshari is uh, uh, right. Mu'tazili. Huh? Mu'tazili. Mu'tazili. Right. But it's pointed out. It's like well known. Nobody. It's like anyone who reads that book knows that. So they 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 make it clear. Same thing with Ibn Kathir. If you're going to read Ibn Kathir, he has on the Mutashabi had some issues. Right from from our perspective, and so point being is that uh, a couple years after that they had a big fitna within their group, their clique, right, and and they are a clique of intellectuals, very high level intellectuals in different colleges and universities. Okay, so um, on uh, uh, as a result of that, they really just like deflated. They deflated, and now past few years. This is the most attention they're going to get is from Yaqeen. They got more attention from this article. I'm not blaming Yaqeen for doing this or Ficini for doing it. You need to have a refutation. But I think they got more attention from refutations of their illogical ideas and irrational ideas than anyone. The only one giving them positive attention consistently is Zaytuna College. I say it as a critique, right? This is their, they, they give it positive attention. They never say, okay, here it is. But be careful to uh, be careful of these ideas. They're not Islamic ideas. Like that little thingy, Sheikh Hamza himself does it. He says it. He says, people say I'm a perennialist. I'm not a perennialist. I mean, he never necessarily explicitly said it's kufr, but 
for what it's worth, he says that he's not a perennialist. So he distances himself from that. But he's also not a Hanafi. He's not a Hanbari. He's not a Shafi'i, right? He's not a Zaidi. But well, not being something is not a ruling. I don't, I, I, do I care what somebody is? I need to know the ruling, right? These ideas are Kufri ideas. In any event, it should come to the need to say it. Everyone else is saying it, okay? This, it is a Kufri idea. It is a European ideology. Uh, that poses itself as the judge of all religions. The nerve, right? <laughs> the judge of all religions. And he goes deep into the 1600s, and um, he goes deep into their the origins of these ideas. It's a long... Is 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 he now uh, officially part of Yaqeen or just a contributor? Because he's doing the podcast, he's doing these other things. So good for him. I like um, his ideas, yeah. um, you know, his work in general. And he's got a lot of really good um, quotes here from them. And the other guy who's their arch enemy, oh, what's his name? They all pretend they don't know who he is. And I forgot his name because I read his book a long time ago. He's a former perennialist who had a personal burnout with Martin Lings and then wrote like the tell all about the perennialist. Like, it's like it, it is a little bit of a cult. There's like a clear, and they never want to come out and say, hey, we're perennialists, this is our belief, because it's illogical. It's an illogical belief. Now, if you're... Pre- oh, Sedgwick. That's his name. Sedgwick. Mark. I think it's Mark Sedgwick. Yeah, Sedgwick. Listen up. It's Rabi al-Awwal. If you're a perennialist, if you're a perennialist sympathizer, do not dare show up to a maulid and say, oh, I'm a Sufi. No. Don't. You are the biggest insult to the Prophet Wasallam. Why? Because you try to put icing on it. See the, see the, 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 the right-wing guys... They put the poison right there. It's it's poison. They want you dead. They want you eliminated. The hardcore evangelical Christians, even some of the Catholics. Catholics aren't all, like, friendly, right? I've, I've been on some Catholic um, websites and go down to the comment section. You know, they say things about Muslims. They, they don't believe it's true. They just believe it's a falsehood that needs to be eliminated from the earth. That's their belief, okay? So Catholics aren't always all our friends either. But then... At least those, be, they, it's clear, they're against you, period, discussion over. The liberals, it doesn't take, you know, too much to realize that they only like you as a minority identity. That's it. As soon as you're the majority, and as soon as you're insisting that this is the truth, and as soon as you forbid wrong that they love, they're your enemies, right? It took maybe a decade or two for, for everyone to get around to it, but now majority Muslims know that the liberals are their enemies, okay? The progressives in these. But these guys will come in and can fool people for a long, for, for years, for years. You'll never know if you don't read carefully. Beautiful, flowery covers, critique of modernity, right? Uh, all wonderful critiques. That's the best part of them, the critique of modernity. But uh, flowery Sufi covers, right? The Sufi path of love and this, that, and the other, right? Ibn Arabi said this. They only quote like three Islamic scholars and they, don't quote, they hardly quote the Quran. They never quote a hadith. Right? They rarely quote the Prophet. It's one of the signs of Ahl Sunnah and not Ahl Sunnah. Okay? So you could be fooled. And at the end of the day, you do not require Iman and the Prophet for salvation. Yes or no? The answer to them is no, we do not require it for salvation. So don't dare show up at any Mawadid. Don't put, you know, anything of this stuff, posting this stuff and talking about this. As if, oh, we love the prophet. No, you cannot say I love the prophet, but I don't believe you don't have to believe him. So then what is he then? Did he lie? Oh, it's just relative? Relative? Who's deciding what's relative? If you're deciding what's relative, you got to go up, right? You got to rise up above and you be a th- authority above them, okay? So this stuff is just, um, it's nice to see though that the truth prevails and these silly ideas, honestly, it's an idea that caught on some people emotionally they promoted it for years, okay, it's decades, got in very high positions. But notice, they can never come out in the light, in the open, and say, we are perennialists, this is our belief. They may touch upon it here and there, sneak it in. Oh, the perennial, uh, you know, they nev- they'll never say, oh, here is the perennialist aqidah. Here's our aqidah. Let's debate it. Let's discuss it. Okay? All right. So, good job there by... Yaqeen for putting that out there. You can get it. Just go to... You want to link it, maybe? Um, are all religions the same? Islam and the false promise of perennialism. And this was published a couple of days ago. 
All right. Well done. Honestly, there's a f- there are only a few things that I would say. This is one of the few things I would say that the tolerance level for it is very low. Yeah. It's a very low tolerance level for this nonsense. And and the fact that you try to sneak into the Islamic community, never come out in the open, and then you somehow got the sympathy of Dr. Omar, who somehow got the sympathy of Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, and they, you know, helped you along and opened the door for you. And you now they're coming into different regular normal, or as they say, normative Sunni uh, operations and conferences and teaching as if this is like just a regular acceptable scholarship when it's far from that. I have to say that. Far from that. But hey, you know, one thing good about Zaytuna, it's a college. It's up for, everything's up for critique, right? As long as you bring knowledge and you bring a fair critique, good. And so that's, they, they, they're accepting of that. Which is why I say it, knowing that they're not going to take it personally. Because when you become a college, you're open up for fair critique. That's exactly what we gave.